Um, so I grew up in like a really small town okay. in the UK and my family are mixed heritage. So we were like quite unusual in the village, you know, okay. it was like that kind of time. I, I was yeah. a bit of, I was described as a tomboy. Okay. I thought dance was girly, so I wouldn't do it until. Like, really? I, so I went to okay. dance school age 25. Okay. And um, I started dance, I think age 17. So I was really late to dance. But I think I always but, wanted to be, you know, to create. And like, yeah. I had this vision from probably like age three or four. Yeah. <laughs> like I love, mm. you see, you, you work with performers and, and we all bring our magic to the space. And it's, for me, it's about working with intuition and like following little things that happen that maybe th people think it's a mistake, but actually it's part of the magic where there's this yes. kind of journey. Yeah. I'm dabbling with painting at the moment. And Are you? It. Yeah, it's really Whoa. fun. It's really exciting. Yeah. <laughs> I'm calling it sacred, heart, sacred Art to Heal the Heart. Right. Like, whereas there's been points in my life where I was unhappy hmm. and actually I needed more. It's, okay. it's weird. It's like the more that I get, the closer I get to my truth, the less I need. Yeah. Yes, guys, welcome to another episode of Let Inspiration Take Over podcast. Today, I have a very special guest. I say this a lot, but <laughs> I do mean it. I have a special guest to get uh, a special guest. Sorry, today uh, her name is Ella. Um, this has been in the making for quite a while. I think it might have even been like six weeks or uh, over over a month, and that sort of thing. I'm very excited um, to have her on the podcast today, and I'll tell you one of the reasons why I'm really excited um, about having you on the podcast is because on this podcast we've had entrepreneurs, we've had a baker. I've now had a rapper on here, I've had an author, I've had, who else have I had? A, a restaurateur, I can't even remember some of the people that I've had, but today we've got a dancer. <laughs> <laughs> and guys, I'll tell you, not only is she um, a dancer, she is a creative, she is an artist at heart, uh, and just generally a good soul and good vibes. I think I was telling her when I was coming to the studio today. So I'm very excited to really dive in um, to her as a person, her story, and the work that she uh, she does. I mean, I'm speaking about her like she's not here. Ella, Welcome to the Lit Thank Podcast you. and uh, please, for those that don't know you, perhaps you can give us a brief introduction uh, sure. of yourself and what you do. Yeah, Sure. And thank you. It's, no. it's a pleasure to be in this space, in this yeah. amazing space wow. and on this amazing podcast. As well. Thank you. <laughs> no, we're really thankful to have you. So yeah. So if you can uh, jump in, what, what is it you do, you know, for those sure. listeners and viewers? I mean, so in a nutshell, know? there's kind of like three parts to mm -hmm. what I do. So um, I have a dance company, mm -hmm. which is called LMSMA Company. Brilliant. And for that, I choreograph. Um, currently, I'm dancing as well, which okay. has been a while. So mm -hmm. it's, um, it's given me this new focus of like press ups and getting super fit. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we, yeah, and we make work that mixes. So I have a background in breaking, break dance, okay. and then kind of Afro Latin style. So rumba, okay. salsa, samba, and, and yes. so on. And we kind of mix those styles along with contemporary dance and Brilliant. work, which is all about unlearning uh -huh. and the stories that we would have liked to have seen on the okay. stage instead of like the, you know, the ballets and the kind of the traditional the stories. Regular, more like yeah. the real, like the real story. Of there you like, go the people that we we met growing up being put on stage mm -hmm. so that's one thing i do okay then i'm a coach as okay. well hey yeah, yes there's that is a aspect of it yeah, yeah. so um <laughs> that company is called maya gandaya limited and that's the one that i've just finished my book today mm -hmm. and will be which will be out soon um and we'll that jump is, into that as well the yeah. book you were telling me about yeah. it in the car so i'm very interested to hear about that as well yeah, yeah. so many things <laughs> it's exciting. yeah go ahead yeah. um so the coaching is sort of it's for creative people and it's um, it's really about supporting people to connect with their intuition mm -hmm. and this concept of that we, we're so easily put in a box by ourselves, by other yes. people, by society, the way by around. conditioning. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and so it's really helping people to see where have they put themselves in a box that mm -hmm. actually they don't want to be in. That's brilliant. And then how can they create what they would love and, yes. you know, rather than being kind of... Um, confined constricted and yeah, restricted like we were talking thing, okay. a lot about like this this like if you're scared then actually there's probably behind what you that should fear, be doing something yeah absolutely yeah, so yeah. It's helping people with that absolutely yeah and then the last thing i do is yoga mm -hmm. and it's sort of got me through so much in my life okay and it's also you know i also teach yoga and yeah. like run retreats and so on as well mm-hmm 
Mm-hmm. Okay, tell us a little bit about the yoga. You know, yoga, I've heard about it. No, mm-hmm. more people speak about it, but it's just in, in passing and that sort of thing. What sure. what does it entail, uh, the yoga sure. aspect of it? So much. So, um, so right. I kind of... Not um, the full thing, just brief. Yeah, I'll go brief, as <laughs> yeah. brief as I can. So I yeah. first came to yoga. Interestingly, I was always really intrigued, intrigued by like, what is mm-hmm. meditation? Even as a kid, I was quite like, what is that? Mm-hmm. And then at Leeds Uni, actually, was my um, first, there was like a free lunchtime class. Okay. And I just used to go every day. I was like, yeah. this thing is really, there's something in it. Brilliant. Um, but the styles that kind of, as time has gone on. So I first start, like the style I trained in is called vinyasa. Mm-hmm. And they say that yoga is this idea of like y- yoking or uniting the shadows like all of the stuff within us you know the shadows the stuff yeah we, the stuff we push down like often it might okay. be um certain aspects of ourselves that we don't like so we try and pretend they're not there ah, or, right yes yeah there, there is this element <laughs> yeah compartmentalizing yeah, yeah. <laughs> or like maybe it's um yeah. you've had this whisper that you want to be a dancer your whole yeah. life but then you're like oh i'm too old or you know, like whatever the word is that you insert it. I'm in no the, good yeah, exactly. And so I don't think like I'll be able to get in that. shape. Yeah, or right integrating here. that. That's yeah. what yoga is really about. Okay. Yeah, and I'm now my my yoga style that I teach most is called Kundalini. Okay. Which I discovered actually in South Africa. Did you? Yeah. Right. Um, Go ahead. So mad, like how yeah. these things tie in together, and, right? And like. Yeah. take you on amazing journeys and yes. that you would never expect right yeah. i was saying the south africa story we're definitely going to jump into uh into that but before we get into the good stuff because i know there'll be so many little rabbit holes to go under and the stories that you'll be telling us and i'm so interested to hear them uh, as i was perusing through your website i mm-hmm. told you i think it's beautiful and the way you've set it up with a lady wearing i think it's like a is it a rob that she's wearing yes. yeah, yeah i was like this is very purposeful i can see that whatever thought went into having that website was very deliberate Mm. and it captures you immediately i think it perfectly um kind of describes your the personality of what you do without it saying anything and the fact that it's the first image i was like you know what i'm in the process of making a website this is something to um to learn from but what something else i came my website guys well right you you told me yeah like he's done such a great job right definitely need that hookup right Mm -hmm. so i was saying there's a statement that i uh came across so that's what i want to uh, for us to jump into Mm -hmm. before we take it back so what i like to do on the podcast is just to take it back to early days and that's what i think before we do that uh there's a statement by martha graham i think it is Mm -hmm. which says dance is a song of the body uh either of joy or pain how does this statement personally apply to you such a powerful statement as well like um, so I now have this practice that I've kind mm-hmm. of been like developing over the past year, but you know, it's just, it's more like honoring that this is what I love to do, mm-hmm. which is to jump on my bike when I, okay. like, if I'm feeling, you know, when you feel an emotion and you're like, what is this? Jump we'll on the bike it. and then go and dance it out. All right. And, like, it's just the most beautiful practice to be okay. able to be like, okay, yeah, this is sadness. And like, you know, the styles that I'm interested in, mm-hmm. they just lend themselves to such a kind of passionate way of moving that you can, you know, you can express Go. anger, sadness, yeah. um, wow. you know, love, hatred, like all of the different yeah, emotions to just really get in yes. touch with that. Okay. And like, that's what I'm really interested. I've realized I don't really care if people are like flexible, mm. have good technique, you know, all of those things on stage. Yes. I like seeing the soul like the soul perform yeah okay and so um (laughs) i can even think of one moment i was i was doing a show in amsterdam Mm -hmm. and some things had happened and i was feeling really emotionally just charged and then i channeled that into the show and it it just transformed something because the the dance itself can become like alchemy, you know, mm, that you yes. kind of channel that emotion into this beautiful piece of expression. art and creativity. Yeah. Before you even continue on that point, I heard somebody speaking about this to say some of the best pieces of art or some of the best songs have been made from heartbreak right. or some of the best work has come from when mm. somebody has experienced kind of the pain yeah. of heartbreak or the pain of being left or the pain mm. of being dumped or whatever it is. And when they channel that into art yeah. is some of the best yeah. pieces of creativity that you I'm ever healing, get i think yeah well. like i um, absolutely yeah i'm dabbling with painting at the moment and I'm are you it. yeah it's really oh. fun it's really exciting. yeah <laughs> i'm calling it sacred heart sacred art to heal the heart all right yeah and i think there's something in like us as you know we're all i believe we're all creatives it's not absolutely. like some people are and some people aren't yeah yeah 
Um, but there's something about this that like, expression in art. Mm -hmm. And I think there is also a layer of I've recognized that often in my career, people kind of organizations or maybe the choreographer require you to almost like put your pain on stage in a way that I'm like, okay. I want to always check. Do I want to? Oh, right. And I also yeah. want to try not to kind of put my dancers through that. Yeah. Like, yes. That it should be a, a thing that is collaborative and by choice mm -hmm. and that if it is expressing that emotion then what's the care around it of maybe aftercare mm -hmm. or how do you like what do we do in terms of processes and that's why I love that I also coach because I have these Brilliant. kind of tools that you know we can close down a I was going to say a ceremony that's so mm. interesting okay um, I meant a performance but yeah I guess it is a ceremony it is a, a ceremony in a way right like way. a ritual yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so no, you know you. we can close yeah. that down in a way that is empowering and okay. is, is a is a um is a transformation rather mm -hmm. than it being like you know i definitely have had that in the past where it's like somebody you, feels forced yeah or, or like i've left and i'm like i just put all this pain and then it's yeah. like i have to put myself back together again and yes it doesn't feel appreciated yeah. no you're right in that aspect uh i think yeah something to trade carefully mm. with because once it's been open then you now right. have to deal with it yeah. so if you're not responsible with that then you yeah know, absolutely be detrimental yeah. to the person that sort of thing yeah beautiful already going into it guys as i always say Indeed. inspiration <laughs> is taking we haven't even gone deep yet so <laughs> speaking of uh going deep where i always start with a, a podcast before we, we jump into the meat and to, in, into the great stuff is to find out about yourself sure. uh foundationally right so um, i always ask this question say what do you remember about your upbringing sort of formative sure. years like sure. growing up normally it's more relevant as it pertains to the work that you do yeah. so for example do you find there was creativity in your household was it encouraged what was your school life like and that sort of thing take sure. us back Ella. um yeah. it's interesting because there mm -hmm. was there was creativity but to be honest not loads of it okay um so i did i came to dance late even um, so I grew up in like a really small town okay. in the UK and my family are mixed heritage. So we were like quite unusual in the village, you know, okay. it was like that kind of time. Um, this was the 80s. Okay. So um, in my village, which was actually a town, I think it was a town anyway. It's a long time since I left there. Right. <laughs> you don't even remember. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but yeah, in my in my village, let's call it, there was three families who were not white. Right. And so we kind of... Um, we were we were quite the outsiders to be honest in terms of that um you know when you you just know that you don't belong, belong you're kind of yes. reminded of that and it sounds yeah. really silly because you know i'm i'm super light skinned and like right. <laughs> like now people are like really but yeah back mean? then okay. yeah we yeah. did you know like there was quite Experience a lot of racism that. and it was okay. yeah so um that was i think there was an element of of that belonging mm -hmm. question Okay. from very from very young um i think i was a right bossy boots as well because I, well, yeah. I had this yeah i had this memory of like right. basically i was trying to choreograph okay. um the teddy bears picnic Ooh. and being annoyed with the children mm. because they were not taking it seriously okay yeah <laughs> so i think there was like an element of this bossy bossy boots to be to be honest i'm really not bossy like anyone yeah. that works with me they'll be like ellie you're so not bossy but yeah but i think i always but, wanted to be you know to create and like, yeah. i had this vision from probably like age three or four <laughs> yeah but at the time do you reckon it was like more of a defense mechanism i think um, then i was too that? young it was just this okay. idea in my head of how i wanted things to be okay which of yeah. course like you know as you grow up yeah. As you understand the world, you let go of your idea of what things, there how you, you want go. things to be and the beauty of creating. Like I love, mm. you see, you, you work with performers and, and we all bring our magic to the space. And it's, for me, it's about working with intuition and like following little things that happen that maybe think people think it's a mistake, but actually it's part of the magic. You know, there's this yes. kind of journey. But I think back then, age three or four, it was this idea of like, because I was actually quite serious about my art. Really? Back then. Really? And I and, and a bit of a bossy boots. How, how old were you at this point? That's three or four years old. Listen, there's yeah. an element of knowing there. Right. All I see is, man, this person is confident in what they're doing. Yeah. And they know and they're about yeah. what they do. I don't think there's particularly anything wrong with that. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? So, it's yeah, so I don't funny, know if I'd though. call it uh, bossy. I'd call it like knowing this maybe. i think that that <laughs> must have been like what is yeah. this little child mm -hmm. this little child saying that no one's taking the dance seriously 
<laughs> What's going on, guys? Yeah. <laughs> Take me seriously, right? Yeah. But yeah, I did. Like, you know, I love to make those little. Like it, it was less dance, so I I was yeah. a bit of I was described as a tomboy. Okay. And I thought dance was girly, so I wouldn't do it until really. Like, so I went to okay. dance school age twenty five. Okay. And um, I started dance I think age seventeen, so I was really late to dance. Um, it took me a really long time to kind of admit this, like. There was a pride in, I don't dance, but okay. actually I wanted to. To you know, do it, like, it was in, yeah. in you. Yeah, I think from age go. 12, I wanted to, and it was, mm. it was just like unsaying the thing that I'd said as a young child, which was like, oh, I don't, you know, oh, I don't dance. Mm. This kind of, the, the bravery almost that it took to be like. To actually, actually do it. Yeah, and then eventually yeah. actually. And then also because my family were very academic. So, okay. you know, my mum wanted to be an artist, but she yeah. was very much like wanting to, you know, wanting to survive in this world, wanting to yeah. do well. So I knew from young that I was going to uni and that, mm. that was like the, the career path I was taking. There you go. Before mm. we even get to that um, to that point, the not dancing element, where do you feel that that came from? The, you know you know the feeling a bit of shame is what i'm hearing mm -hmm. um, yeah. about it yeah, yeah where would you say so. that, that came from um excuse me yeah it's interesting mm. i think my so my mum was quite a feminist and i, mm. I wonder mm. if there was an aspect of that of like because i did so i i saw ballet on the tv mm. um i must have been like again four and i was like that's what i want to do that's what okay. i want to be when i grow up and i went to this ballet class once and um was complete again like what was this three and four year old right? child because I was like <laughs> why are they so patronizing yeah. I don't want to do good toes naughty toes I want to do the stuff I saw on the tv no and I was like I'm way. not going back <laughs> yeah oh, wow. but my mum was really pleased because yeah. she was like oh thank goodness I don't have to you know put her through pink tights and tutus and all that stuff there was kind mm -hmm. of an element of like relief for her so I wonder if it was all connected to that and like hearing my mum's relief being like, yeah, I'm not a dancer. I'm not going to do that stuff. Um, but I mean, I, and I was, I was a tomboy. I chose, you know, I chose, and, and I, I don't like the word tomboy now, but I chose, like I love nature. I love climbing right. trees. I was quite a outdoor kid. Okay. Um, and yeah. I was quite a kind of, um, not into like the, the stereotypical girly things that mm. kind of really annoyed me as a child. So, um, so yeah. And I think I put dance into that box. And so there was this sort of, shame aspect of like denying certain sides of me which is also super funny now because i'm very um yeah. divine feminine i'm fascinated with the divine feminine okay and, yeah, yes so. and you strike me as that you know the dance yeah. and just the aura yeah. about you i don't think it's something that you have to say but you've, yeah. you've just so the yeah. fact that you're saying you used to be like um well that's the word that's used yeah tomboy i'm like what i can't see it so you know it's, <laughs> so it's quite funny. interesting how people uh evolve so yeah. i bet like the people that we're seeing at mm. the time probably didn't think that you would end up being this dancer yeah. graceful person into yoga right. and yeah. influencing and teaching other people yeah. in this way and i so, think there's something yeah. so powerful in that of like saying no to the stereotypes that we even yeah. put and the boxes we put on ourselves we right? spoke about yeah. that yeah earlier mm. <laughs> yes yeah. absolutely yeah I, I think i was saying to you earlier that you learn so much i think every person needs to go on a journey where they discover themselves who they are really outside mm -hmm. the things that condition us yeah. outside how you were raised outside peer groups mm -hmm. because most of what i knew at one point was based on what my peers were telling me mm -hmm. it was based on how i was raised in an african household it was based on what i saw on telly i was uh, influenced a lot by american television yeah. it was based on these um ideas of masculinity how a masculine man should be and you shouldn't do so and then you know i just went one day on a journey it's like you know i want to find out what i actually like and you know yeah. discover myself what do i enjoy what do i want out of um out of life and that sort of thing mm -hmm. and what do i actually want out of this who am i what oh, do i man. like outside somebody telling me shaming me mm -hmm. for something that i like and you know that's where i actually discovered to say okay you know what to my core, I do want a family. So even the, you know, yes. you came, oh you've my seen God, my people today, so right? Amazing. I will tell you now, Ella, I saw that before it even came uh, through. So I, I just knew to myself, this is something that I wanted. So I had to mm. uh, tailor my life to something that would attract that yeah. and accommodate that, right? Um, as you say, there's a word that you used earlier, unlearning. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. had to do a lot of unlearning and even now it's a process of unlearning a lot of stuff that doesn't serve me well yeah. that sort of thing and then also I think I mentioned to you earlier having an open mind is so important because what it does is it helps you to learn so even for the yeah. having an open mind doesn't mean you should take everything that's given to you but it's just you hear it and obviously take what you will and take mm. what you won't just because you hear something doesn't mean you're going to to take it in but I agree with you yeah. to say unlearning is so important mm. having an open mind to actually hear where somebody is coming from is so important it's interesting that you say your experience of, um, you know, growing up and, uh, you know, it not being very nice and you being um, treated a kind of way because of the color of your skin. Mm -hmm. I can guarantee you there's somebody that will look at you and they'll think there is no way, right? <laughs> right. You experience that you yeah. with your light skin or oh, yeah. you're beautiful or whatever. And there is no chance that that happened um, to you. And people will put things and they'll assume that your life has just been one easy mm. Blob and everything's just handed to you. You know, you have those biases. And there and is. Not healthy. And I, I want to like yeah. honor that. You know, I really mm. recognize that now, and that even mm -hmm. within my family, because um, my sister has darker skin than me, that there was also those those layers, not within my family, yeah. but there is colorism. You know, no, colorism is definitely right. a real thing. Yeah, yeah. definitely. So, like, yeah. It's real. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's funny how these things all they all affect us I am, they? Yeah. yeah and they're all apart and i think yes. also like my work now so mm -hmm. i was saying on the on the journey here like mm -hmm. i think for me spirituality and unlearning so is important. so essential but yes. it's also like anti-racism work is really kind of the core mentioned. absolutely yeah, and yeah. Like, you know we live in this colonialist world patriarchy world that it's like the more that we can unlearn the more we can get back to our true selves as well but also you know that we were talking about being in service yes and like for me mm -hmm. like you know we there's so many layers that we need to unlearn and like if you look back in history at things that people thought were acceptable okay were absolutely not okay right and then yeah. like what is what are we still doing and accepting that actually is really not okay and this is where for me mm -hmm. real work is in the unlearning of a world that is chaotic and yes. unfair and, and doesn't serve people be, correctly yeah. that discriminates right. against certain people yeah, yeah. no you're mm -hmm. absolutely right and i think that awareness mm -hmm. is so important sometimes as you say yes there is a certain level of privilege in certain areas and it's, it's a matter of just being honest yeah. with yourself similar to how there's a privilege yeah. in me being a man mm -hmm. they may very well be privileged in you being fairer yeah. skinned yeah. and that's that's the, the the truth of it but i, I think okay. the way to think about it is how do i use my privilege for better this is it. This How do I use it for exactly. service? Right. This right. Is the work. This is yeah. what we're doing this here. Is magic. This yeah. is what we're doing here. I absolutely understand mm. that there are certain places, even though I'm a black man, uh -huh. as a man, there will be certain areas where I'll get ahead and whatever, but still, I still feel like, okay, I, I still want to be of service mm -hmm. to people and actually use that for good. Use it yeah. to elevate other people, see them get ahead as opposed to sort of carrying on with life and denying it and totally. saying oh you're, you know it doesn't exist and that sort yeah. of thing but and i can see yeah. why it's easier to just like do you and not oh you yeah know, it's less hustle yeah yeah right, right. <laughs> yeah so it's, it yeah. is but then like you know surely life is about humans and connection yes. why do we do the things that we love is it just for us to experience or mm. is it about the world and surely exactly you know, even like your how do you leave it better children, we want to create right? a better world for them right? yes so, Yes. And you remember the thing that I said earlier, we are literally on borrowed time, mm -hmm. right? I've learned that now more than ever, mm -hmm. that time goes so quickly. So if you're not really doing something that you find to be meaningful and you one day yeah. find that don't have much time on this earth, what will have been the point mm -hmm. of you being around as opposed to, as I said, I bet you love it in the fact that you're working in your purpose right now, yeah. doing dance, doing all this creativity. And I can just see that you love it and you embody yeah. it. And then you earn, you know, it helps you, you're, you're, you're getting a living from it. Mm -hmm. But that's not the point. The point is the fact that you are actually doing a service to the world and yeah. you're also doing a service to yourself. And weirdly, you know? I, I even find <laughs> because I'm happy, mm -hmm. I don't really need that much. There you go. You know, like, yes, I need like good food and, mm -hmm. you know, the things that kind of like the nourishments and, and so on. But I'm not um, like, whereas there's been points in my life where I was unhappy mm. and actually I needed more. It's, okay. it's weird. It's like the more that I get, 
the closer I get to my truth, the less I need. There you go. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Mm. I hear you. And even work doesn't feel like work, yeah, right? The things really that you do, true. it's like at the moment my weeks are long, but it doesn't feel like it. Whereas yeah. remember if I'm doing a job and the weeks are long, I would feel it. I would mm. feel it physically. I would feel it mentally. It mm. drains me. But the work that I do here does not drain me. I yeah. could do it for long. In fact, I have to regulate myself. I have to limit myself to not overstep because i've got people right i yeah, need to right. have myself i've got family yeah. and that's sort of, and all that good stuff mm -hmm. but having said that right jumping into you a little bit more so the dance perhaps you can take us a little bit on a journey i know you've sure. touched on it briefly in yeah. terms of you know when you got into you said it was mm -hmm. 17 yeah when you got 17. into it if yeah. you could take us on a journey of of the process of sure. you transitioning and going into dance uh, and yeah. it was so fun yes um, so it actually started <clears> with painting mm -hmm. with drawing i used to draw okay. dancers mm -hmm. and then there was this like oh i want to be one that's why i'm drawing them all the time mm -hmm. um and then because i had this conditioning of i have to go to university and it's funny because it turned right. i have to go to university or oh, you thought that you had to yeah, go to university I, I, I just okay. knew that that was you know there, there was such a pride for my family of like mm. going to uni the first people in you know in their generation and it was like you will do this and so, oh, wow. so it wasn't an yeah. option for me like i knew i wanted to be a dancer but it wasn't yeah. an option okay and then at <clears throat> uni i um i basically met um, this this it was called the Luso Brazilian Society. Mm. Um, so that was one thing that happened. Another thing that happened was back in Bristol, which is where my family moved to after the village that I told you about. Yeah. Um, thank goodness too. <laughs> Although I mean, I would be intrigued to go back and see what that village. What's is going like. on? Yeah, yeah, yeah going absolutely. On I'm sure, it's changed. Yeah. But um, but yeah. So I met a woman. Who, basically, I heard samba, and and it actually, I'd been like. I randomly had a few samba like CDs in my house that I loved mm -hmm. and it was kind of like this secret like don't confess that to anyone but I really loved Ashe music which is a, a specific kind of samba music oh wow yeah but then I heard like actual samba samba but like a batucada like a really kind of heavy drum rhythm and was mm -hmm. like that's my music you know and you just like goosebumps all over feel and like, it. that is my song yeah, yeah. where well, you feel it in the soul yeah the way you were feeling at my piano oh my beats God, earlier, right? Amazing. You were just like, I like yeah. that. I like that yeah, song. What's one that one, right? Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> and so that was actually my my kind of journey. Mm -hmm. I'm like digressing. of. Um, so I also, when I was 14, okay. I went to a salsa night and I forgot that. That um, that was another like really life-changing moment. Okay. Um, partly as well because there were people that looked like me because we moved to Bristol, but it was still, you know, this was like back in the day. So mm -hmm. um, Bristol was still quite segregated and um quite complex in terms okay. of race and yeah and basically I went to this salsa club and I was like there's people that look like me mm -hmm. but, you know there's just it's all like, these oh, different wow, people exciting. it's a really diverse space yeah yes. and I was like oh yeah. this is another kind of area where I feel very safe and very like I can be myself and mm -hmm. I belong and it's not about you know that kind of do I belong in this space kind of questions because you yeah there's this thing I would like look around a space and just be like I don't belong here <laughs> all right yeah I <laughs> yeah, hear you yeah, it's like where are my yeah, people <laughs> yeah. so that was yeah so that I think was really important but okay. basically when I went to uni yes. I spent all my nights like I just I barely, uh, I did go to uni. Yes. And I did actually get a 2 1, which I think is American. Oh, there you go. Say yeah. that again, politics right? And sociology. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you, you studied politics yes, and sociology at uni, yeah. right? And what yeah. uni did you go to? Leeds Uni. You went to yeah. Leeds. So, um, Leeds? Yeah, courses. I went to Beckett, you know? I like it. Yes. <laughs> And they've got amazing it. courses, right? right. Like everything uh, coming and everything out. else. Like, wow, it's such yes. a cool uni. Yeah. So, yeah, tell us a little but, bit yeah. about that, the uni so, um, life. Yeah. So, the uni life, basically, I just. Mm -hmm. Got, I just did my lectures, but without, I wasn't that interested. Were you not? I, okay. kind of, I was kind of figuring out that like politics is not the way to make change. <laughs> yes. Um, but by night I was yeah. going out and dancing salsa. Okay. And then I was sort of training in some, in the samba. And basically by my third year, mm -hmm. I was getting paid to do shows. Okay. And it was great because I was like, I could earn so much money from a samba show or a salsa show. Yes. In a night. And there was like this, like suddenly, like, huh? You will tell me you can't be a dancer because you're not going to make any make money. money. And I'm like, people are making money. money. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that was the start. Yeah. Um, was that like the aha moment? It was. Yeah? yeah. Okay. There you go. I still didn't have the courage to kind of say, I'm not. I'm not going to have a normal career. Or I was still okay. on the journey of like, you know, this this conditioning that we have of like yeah. you need to do the life that everyone else is doing yes. kind of thing okay. but um 
but after that so I, I actually went traveling so the other thing I figured out at uni mm-hmm. was um if I if I worked the amount of like so uni hours were very small okay and I was like if I fill my time up with working as a waitress then I can go traveling. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that kind of was my other passion. It was like, I just wanted to see the world and understand okay. the world and stuff. So I did a lot of traveling. Um, but basically after uni, eventually I started getting enough kind of dance work to say, I'm just going to do, I'm just going to go for it and, and be a dancer. Mm-hmm. And I started to get invited to also do things in the contemporary dance world. Okay. And there was a moment I think it was maybe two years after uni where I realized, actually, I want to be a real dancer in terms Mm. of I want to go like as far as I can possibly go with this. And, you know, we talked about fear, like it was like, well, how am I going to earn enough money? How am I going to, you know, all of the questions. Of course. Yeah. You're wondering. (laughs) But Actually, I think there's this magic of because I knew. So I decided I was going to go back to study dance. I was going to go back to uni and I was going to study dance. And I think it was like three or four years after uni that I did eventually earn enough money. Okay. I had a, a figure. I knew how much I needed to make. For you and to be able to. that happened when yes. I had that figure in my head and my bank yeah. account was just like stretching and stretching. I didn't actually really? get all so of it. So working together. towards it. But yeah, I was okay. working Okay. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. yeah. And it was over two years. So mm-hmm. I, I went, I paid like the first year's kind of um, fees. Mm-hmm. It was in London. So I, I lived at my grand's house on the outskirts of London. And then I like worked and worked and worked and it was a really hard, you know, I did, I burnt out in that time because it was just putting in the work, work, isn't it? Yeah. Training. And there was just so much. And actually I had a lot of not belonging beliefs came out again. Yes. I don't belong here. Oh yeah. Yeah. Am I good enough to do this? Is it worth it? Doing ballet since they were three. I was 17. It was late. Yeah. I like my background was these dance styles where it's, I I forgot to mention breaking that I took Mm -hmm. a breaking before I went to dance school. Okay. Yeah. But but, you know, I was like a breaker and a samba dancer and a salsa dancer. Mm. It was like no one else. Those things are like different. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. That's like eclectic, diverse. Where do I fit? (laughs) It was really tough, but, um, but it was also, Mm. it was really worth it. And I'm so glad Mm. now because my, my uniqueness is, Mm -hmm. I have this very different kind of background. background. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And you find that that's what helped you in setting up the uh, Ella Mesmer Company. Mesmer Company. Yeah. Company. I mean, yeah. I think it was hard as well. Okay. And like my journey within companies was mm-hmm. hard because, or maybe actually probably what was hard was just the, the beliefs. Like I had to do a lot of, you know, I'm so glad I found yoga. Okay. Like yoga kind of helped me through and becoming a yoga teacher again was mm-hmm. a piece of magic. It was the teacher from my dance from my conservatoire who gave me a scholarship to study okay. as a yoga teacher really so you actually through. studied yeah. it and that okay. I think for my mental yeah. health that was so transformational like every week yeah to really think about the soul and the spirit and you know like look at us as human beings and kind of start to like almost like have a bit of a philosophy mm. kind of thinking about life in that in that very spiritual way was just mm-hmm. so essential for my for my being okay and not trying to always come to a space to prove that I did belong and I was whole. Right. I didn't believe I was. <laughs> I know, right? Nah, yeah. that's some really powerful stuff. Mm. Um, I mean, next thing, I think I saw this on uh, on your website as well about the diaspora dance theatre, mm-hmm. right? Perhaps if you can describe sure. that for us. So it's this thing yeah. of like, again, it's kind of about the boxes of, mm-hmm. so, and I work with, kind of quite a diverse team of dancers which tend to be people where we meet and we just like we want to work together Mm -hmm. but um but I like I got a really wonderful kind of um opportunity as a choreographer in 2014 yeah and they wanted me to describe my my stuff as um latin hip-hop dance Mm mm-hmm and I was like, but that's not what it is it just didn't feel right it's something else okay pigeonholed yes um, and so yeah, I, I kind of was like, well, how do I describe it? And it's that the, the dance styles that I'm really interested in, if mm-hmm. you actually look at the roots, all of them go back to Africa. Oh, wow. And, you know, I just really like yeah. when I teach, for example, if I teach Samba, we will always talk about the real roots and the real story. And I think that's really important. There to, you go. Yeah. You know, and the same, like if you look at breaking, like if all of them, if you really, if you really do the research, actually someone I want to big up is um, Thomas Presto. There you go. He's amazing. He's based in Norway and okay. he's done a lot of research on kind of the dances of the diaspora. Mm-hmm. And um, 
and kind of understanding where they how you came know, how from they and how they came about. And yeah. like that, he's he's amazed. That there's a goosebump. Yeah. Like for example, you know, I could say um, this style of dance, like um, breaking and capoeira. He's connected mm. back to I think it's called Lukumi and one other dance style. But so In he's, Africa. he's like, yeah, the oh, lineage. Wow. You know, it's amazing okay. work. Yeah. Is that like on a website or is um, there somewhere to find it? Is it like a video? He, he he does have a lot of videos on YouTube, okay. so you can kind of hear All him right. speaking. I no, managed definitely. to get him on my on my podcast. Did and you? Yeah, just like might have to get him on here. He is incredible, <laughs> yeah. honestly. He's brilliant, yeah, brilliant. so inspiring. Yeah. But yeah, and so so that was why I was like, well, I wanna I wanna honor where this has really come from. You know, in mm -hmm. a world that's so much about stealing and not mm -hmm. and not saying where the the roots of the things are. He's actually yeah. going deeper yeah, and yeah, exactly. you know, that's yeah. great. Yeah. And so, yeah, Diaspora Dance Theatre was that, like, yeah. these are the styles and like the team. So, for example, um, Ophelia Balogun is one of my amazing dancers who mm -hmm. I hope we will work for many more projects. But but so Ophelia's styles, like it, it was just a way to be able to kind of embody because I work with individuals as okay. well. Like, for like me, one I don't on one want, sessions like I, more like I don't want you know you can have these companies where everyone does the same leg kick at the same time one me, and it's just um uniform type yeah, yeah I hear what you I, mean I'm yeah, like that's I'm really true. interested in this unique story that okay. we tell as a collective but yes that each individual looks like them and it's not about mm. looking the same as the person oh wow the, you know, so that's yeah. beautiful yeah yeah there you go mm. No, that's beautiful. <laughs> I'd have never thought about it uh, in that manner because, yeah, most times when you think of dance and people are teaching you, it's just like mm. you learn with the others and just yeah. learn the steps and yeah. they don't go in deep. But I think you're educating us today, you're giving us a masterclass yeah. on what it means to really be I'm like still learning into well. dance, yeah. right? Contemporary and all these. And I, when I was reading up about you, that's one of the reasons I really wanted to, to have you on because I knew it would be like a conversation about dance, but roots and completely yeah. different and yeah. rich uh you know conversation that sort of thing and already i'm enjoying it so much but um having said that the ella mesma uh company two things i want to ask before you jump into how it came about and that sure. sort of thing all that beautiful stuff is is that an embodiment of yourself yes. yeah right yeah so it's kind okay. of about like our truest self it's mm -hmm. funny because i have all these different like expressions that i use so um my agandaya which is my coaching company means okay. illusion to joy brilliant and it's this yeah. idea of like moving from illusion to joy but ella mesma in portuguese i'm going to just drink a little bit of water of course um <laughs> ella mesma in portuguese is yeah. like the real the real ella Oh, right. And so it's really about like being your truest, yeah. like who is your truest self? And, yeah. and I, I always say like, I don't know who my truest self is because I change every day. Mm -hmm. Not that I'm putting on a new show. <coughs> you sort of like you're growing in a way. Right. And kind of going back to mm -hmm. what you said about inquis being inquisitive mm -hmm. like, or being curious with yourself of, um, for example, you know, the me two years ago is mm -hmm. definitely a very different me to the me now absolutely yeah and, and I, so I should it be right should constantly yeah. grow that's like, how life should be you know be, how yeah. you said about your friends your your people from when you were younger yes like i don't think those friends i love them but mm -hmm. i don't think they know who i am now I've and i want them that to know before. me now it's a different person. and do you know what happens it becomes a struggle it almost becomes as a clash if you don't take the time to actually find out how somebody is <coughs> you'll be surprised I've, right. I've caught myself out like that as well going to somebody thinking they're the person i knew like 10 15 mm. years ago and discovering no they're not so yeah. that means you have to take the time to get to know them again totally. and then kind of respect their boundaries for who they are mm -hmm. and just treat it that way yeah but i find that i come from a culture where like boundary crossing is like a, an olympic sport mm -hmm. do you get what i mean you will have people come to speak to you the way they used to speak to you when you were 10 years old right. and i'm kind of like um no i'm i'm not that person so yeah, just emphasizing totally. that point and, and i think it's yeah. easy in, in those situations as well to yeah. kind of like slip back into this version of you that's yes. not your full potential yeah and you start yeah. to lose yourself it's like what yeah, is going on here exactly, no this is not me yeah. like this is not who I am mm. and that's not how I do things yeah. that sort of thing so I hear you on yeah. That point. yeah and so then yeah I think that's a journey of like mm -hmm. how can we be compassionate because probably mm -hmm. everyone is doing the same thing in those spaces right yeah um and not need them to know who we are now but then still be who we are now and not <laughs> put ourselves back in that box that actually we probably didn't want to put ourselves Absolutely. into in right back then anyway 
Yes. Mm. So I know you've touched on it briefly, but tell us a little bit about the company then, the Ella sure, Mesmer Ella's company. company. Um, yeah. yeah, so it's it kind of, I guess, similar, like we mm. make it up as we go along. So okay. right now um, I'm working on a piece called The Rainbow Butterfly. Brilliant. Yeah. I was going to bring that up, yeah, but yeah. go ahead, go oh, ahead. So, yeah. exciting. so, um, so I'm yeah. working with two other performers. Yes. Um, and it's kind of, it's inspired by all of our stories okay. growing up, actually. And um, yes. but it's it's a story told by a narrator with a, okay. a book, which we've written the book. And we yes. we're on this mission now to try and get it published. Yep. If you do want to add to the crowdfunder, yep. we have a crowdfunder. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Guys, I'll put the link. Amazing. I'll put the link in the uh, in the video. Yeah. And guide it. Yeah. yeah and so um, so <laughs> yeah. the narrator tells this story of mm -hmm. a child who would love to become a butterfly. Mm -hmm. And it was really uh, kind of inspired by this idea of. First of all, how we gender children um, of like, can this child just be non-gendered? Mm. But also a, a similar thing of like the boxes that we put that child into. People. And then mm. like when, you know, when when we were growing up, mm -hmm. my mum worked really hard actually to try and get quite diverse books for us. Really? But it was, yeah, amazing, oh, wow. nice. amazing mum. Yeah. But, um, but, you know, I think this thing of like just putting more books out there that tell stories that don't have the central character being the there same central go. character that we yes. raise. Yeah. The same stories and yeah. the same people that we've yeah. seen all the time and that on we're screen. And see as well. Yes. We think of the superheroes. Yeah. It's yeah. interesting that you said before you continue, uh, you know, with your point, I don't want to <coughs> stop you in your thoughts. Jordan, um, Jordan Peele, I don't know if you've heard of him, is the guy that wrote that movie Get Out. Oh my God, yeah. That's literally how he casts his leads. He says there's so the, the people that we see all the time in movies and he wanted to do it differently. He mm. said he casts people that we don't see, the stories that haven't been told mm. in lead characters, just so that we can get to see yeah. a different story, yeah. which was quite interesting. And I think me, it you know? is. like That's yeah. the magic of, of storytelling is mm. like, well, that's the magic of what I'm interested in. Story there you go. The stories yeah. that I will go and see. Yes. It's not like the same you know i mean uh, big up like shakespeare best amazing um, you know all of these old school stories they're amazing but i think there's plenty of stories here and now <laughs> that mm -hmm. need to be told yeah and, um, no definitely yeah that's what i'm really interested in absolutely mm. you know as i was perusing through i was like what questions would be good to ask him yeah. right so i got a, a, a bit of a list so that uh you know can be coherent um what i was going to ask you is that uh, i'm sure Obviously, this is sober. How do you find that you've inspired people through dance? Or do you have like some moments where you've had a moment where you're like, you know what? Somebody was really, really touched by the work mm. that you do. If you tell us a little bit of a story. I probably do. Yeah. Um, I still have a confession that I find compliments uh -huh. really hard. Oh, do you? Um, so we, we, were, yeah, we were laughing. I was on a project yeah. last week in uh, Liverpool. Okay. And we did like a, you know, I'd, I like to do these kind of closing ceremonies and yeah. this kind of like honouring of the project. And yeah. I got everyone to go around and, and big up themselves. I call mm. it big up yourself at the end of the session. Um, and I was like, confession, I still hate it. You know, it's really hard. And my, um, like say I get a message where, someone saying like a thank you or a this was good mm -hmm. i tend to my my go-to habit is put that thing down don't um, look at it for like two days really and then back up and be like thank you very much and i'm like oh, that's actually wow. probably comes across as rude but it's it's something it's, about yes. receiving compliments that is still a journey so there's okay. probably a lot of ones that i've like um pushed out <laughs> yes do you think it's something to do with i i i, I this was mentioned before on the podcast. Could it be to do with like imposter syndrome? I think it is. Type thing yeah. where you feel you don't yeah. deserve the compliment or is this yeah. person even, do they mean I'm similar? Not exactly the same, but I'm similar sometimes when somebody's paying me a compliment, I'm like, uh, why? Like, yeah, wh what do you want kind of thing? It's like, <laughs> or, you know, are you are you making fun of me? Yeah. You're taking the pay? But somebody's just genuinely telling you, no, yeah. what you're doing is really good. It's like, ah, uh, yeah, I don't know. And I think I know. as well, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm scared of, yeah. so because I work in the yoga scene and like the the kind of two styles of yoga that i most love are kundalini yeah. and ashtanga so i became an ashtanga teacher okay. before i became a kundalini teacher and both of the kind of gurus at the top of those mm -hmm. styles have actually turned out to be quite abusive like they've really abused their power oh, wow um, that's not good and so i think there's also yeah. an element of like i don't want to get a big head because when you think you. you're better than everyone else, suddenly you begin to lose yourself. You, yeah, you yeah. do something weird. So I think there's an mm. element of that too. Okay. Um, yeah. But yeah, keeping you know. yourself, keeping yourself grounded. Yeah, right? which is kind of fair. Yeah, you know, like, to be honest. And you know, like yeah. 
I get some great compliments and mm. I really am grateful and, you know, really mm -hmm. honor those compliments and I will continue to do the work. Mm -hmm. But I think the real core of it is like unlearning to just be that best version, you know, like for example, um, my big thing at the moment is accessibility and how mm. do we make sure, because a lot of the performers, including myself and neurodiverse. Mm -hmm. So like, how do we, how do we really help everyone to have the best experience? Okay. And cause I actually think the arts has got a lot of flaws and can mm -hmm. be kind of quite a traumatic space. You know, I was talking about like how people want you to put your pain on the stage very often. Yes, yeah. with absolutely no responsibility mm -hmm. or accountability for it. Yeah. yeah, and so that's kind of um, what drives me is like, how do we get to a place where people are really able to be themselves and okay. feel um, feel beautiful? You know, yes. to be them to be themselves to the full is to feel yeah. beautiful. Absolutely, and so. Um, and so I suppose like I see it happening and people do tell me, but I think there's an element of I'm still not quite there yet. So I'm just yes. going to keep going. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think that keeps you working. Yeah. It keeps you trying. It keeps you on your toes. Mm. I think some of the greatest people that are performers out there, that's their mentality. So mm. you, you've got, you get people like uh, Denzel Washington, Tom Hanks. I'm, I can only think of actors mm -hmm. right now, but even people like Warren Buffett and, and mm. other people, that's how they stay on top of their game. Yeah grinding the way they did when they when, when they were starting out and yeah. that way you say the minute you're starting yeah. to feel like you're ahead or you're winning is the minute that you might end up um yeah you know falling and yeah. that sort of thing or turning into one of those people that end up know, right? people so. hopefully that's not going to be you you don't no. strike me you know as that not, kind of person <laughs> and i think as well the difference is when you're coming from a place of service it's all about yeah. your intentions why are you doing mm. it what motivates you and mm. why are you trying to get from it yeah. the minute your goals get made up right. then that's when yeah. it leads to and those that's where i'm like just i, th right? I think yeah. as well um there's a, a <clears throat> famous choreographer called lloyd newton mm. um from deviate who's just retired mm -hmm. and i really like that of like rather than you have to continue and continue and continue kind of mm -hmm. honor when it's like actually now it's time for someone else to come absolutely through, why not step back and yeah. yeah i really like that as a that feels very true yeah. for me of like absolutely right now i've still got more to say and i'm yes. you know i'm loving the journey and the things i'm yes. creating but yeah. um but yeah i kind of i would love to have that moment when i'm like and now i'm just gonna coach and support mm -hmm. other artists to and they can things. go and get it mm -hmm. done absolutely that's that's mm -hmm. great oh i know what yeah. i was gonna say yeah. but i also made a course on imposter syndrome oh did you um, i did right. yeah Tell and, us a little bit and about that was that. Yeah. because because i have I have like raging imposter syndrome you know mm -hmm. I've, I've said like from from that young age i just didn't think i belonged <laughs> yes i yeah. think that's that you'll find out that's with the quite a few people a lot mm. of people especially ones that come from like our backgrounds yeah you know, they have mm. that i had that too and i think yeah. creatives as well like yes. in the creative industry there's yes there's, there's even um so i'm really interested in this concept called the enneagram okay which is these nine personality types and i'm i'm a number four which is the not belonging belief okay but it's also called the tragic romantic or the artist okay what and then um, and i yeah. think that in within the art scene like this need to kind of express and like you know release the the pain inside and so on that we kind mm -hmm. of talked about earlier i think it's mm -hmm. very um it's like this need to create and this need to express that but i think it often comes with these layers of the other stuff and the past experiences and so on absolutely mm. no you're absolutely right very well put and hey. very well defined <laughs> um i was going to ask you as well obviously you're talking about breaking mm -hmm. you've talked about samba and mm -hmm. i think there are a couple of other styles that you've yeah. uh, you've mastered tell us a little bit about that so and much. why you know you sort of got into them sure. that sort of thing yeah yeah sure so yeah it started with kind of mm -hmm. afro-cuban um salsa mm -hmm. samba i love rumba which is a star from cuba rumba, this is amazing yeah. and i think like they're so um kind of there's such amazing polyrhythm like mm -hmm. polyrhythms of the body you know like different parts of the body doing different mm -hmm. things and the music is just so so yeah. beautiful you know in the 90s the, the genre of rumba was dominated in africa was dominated by congolese I've singers been, I've right been watching this yes congolese yeah. and they used to do you know you're saying about the shaking of the dance they used to do the the, the west dancing yeah. you know the the whining that you see now like it's normally like females that like you see but you had men doing the the dancing and the yeah. shaking of their bodies and that sort of thing and it was a really really popular genre like my parents literally Amazing. grew up on that but yeah, yeah i've been too. watching like <laughs> documentaries randomly on that recently just oh, yes. really fascinated because again yeah. i'm really fascinated in this like 
traveling you know because i started so young like mm-hmm. salsa i actually started at 14 oh did you so i've been Brilliant. following that journey it's funny yeah. that i said i didn't start dancing until i was 17 but actually salsa it's was younger 14, there you right? go so, right yeah, yeah. You forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot this. but, but yeah. yeah so um so to kind of like it's like i'm always just trying to piece back and understand um these styles actually and the other thing to to say is um this connection that all of the dances that I'm interested in, possibly apart from breaking, but I think I see the connection, and Thomas mm-hmm. Presto is helping me make it. But um, have a connection to the Orishas, okay, which is super interesting. Which is this Yoruba religion that um, that I've actually found out that I have ancestry to as well. I was telling you, yes, your recent nice. discovery, yeah. yeah. But mm. it's um, but it's I think it's like there's something for me in these kind of like archetype characters. So Orishas are like deities who okay. have like a color, they have a personality, they have mm. um, like an element, like earth, air, fire, water. They have kind of all of these attributes mm-hmm. and kind of in, even connecting into emotions and like expressing of emotions. There was just something really freeing about these different roles you can mm. play as you Brilliant. embody these different Orishas. And I think that was yeah. the same with breaking. It was like, where something would just take you over. Yeah. So you you'd say like inspiration takes you, you over. To, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Like and, and breaking like you get to lose yourself. You, there the you beat, go. You break to the beat and you yeah. you are in that flow that's yeah. just like and the same like salsa when there's like the break in the music of the salsa or like a beautiful salsa dance it's just pure meditation it's just oh, brilliant flow. it's like oh. yeah you know the person that used to speak about that a lot is michael jackson because mm. the time someone was asking him about how he does his dance and how why he's so talented he goes i don't do it he goes i feel it mm. you have to feel the music yeah. and he was you know uh, um, what do you call it giving examples of how he does it but he's like yeah the majority of it is you have to feel mm. it within you in order um to be able to do it and that sort of thing so there's an element yeah. of something sort of taking over you i can imagine yeah. that if it's been put on film you may not even know that you were in that flow when you look at it you're like wow yeah. where did that style even come yeah. from and that sort of thing so it's yeah, absolutely it's brilliant so cool. yeah. it's almost like you kind of you're just in conversation with the music yes and then you just create this beautiful collaboration yeah. absolutely mm. um and i think we spoke about earlier today uh, i want to touch on theater production right yeah. which is a core of what you do perhaps mm. if you can tell us a little bit about that and uh, you know the process of i really wanted to hear it really from a breakdown of what it takes like from the start sure. putting it together yeah. and then the the actual performance mm-hmm. and what that means to you yeah and there can be so many layers you know mm-hmm. it can take years actually like okay um so at the moment i'm working on the rainbow butterfly but we started yes. that probably during lockdown and it was kind of a okay we can't do the show we were going to do so mm-hmm. we kind of we have to change something. it up yeah yeah yeah, um, yeah that piece there there's like the phase with the costume designer and the costume designer actually designed the silks forgot to mention i do aerial silks um but yeah so so the costume designer kind of painted these silks so they're just beautiful they look like butterfly wings there you go but you know that's an element of it there's like the composition of the music Mm -hmm. there's the um there's kind of like these different stages or phases of the the research we call it r d process so the research and development process yes um so like the next piece that i'll be making after this one it's called like water through a stone okay so excited to make it and i'm working with another amazing news artist who you, could, you should get on here Aki yes his song his name oh is that his name yeah, is he based in oh he's, he's based, based in leeds, leeds yeah but he's okay. a lot in he's in london a lot as well oh right yeah. um but he so we're kind of making this piece exploring gender actually okay um the idea of like can we transcend gender so okay. can can and and using salsa so we're going to yes. kind of play with like can i be the leader can he be the follower can okay. we see the between leader follower role yes can we kind Beautiful. of play with like yin and yang ideas and like divine yes. masculine divine feminine and being and i guess it and connects into other. like yeah. breaking and you know i chose breaking because i wanted to play a different role to mm. the role that like salsa and samba i was very gendered as you know it was okay. very much about the female the body and the yes. appearance and so okay. and yeah. so breaking was like this place of freedom yes. and so we're kind of interested in and akim has a background in hip hop styles and okay. contemporary and capoeira which we both share so we're going to kind of play with this Mm-hmm. The spaces in between. Okay. As a, yeah, as a beautiful duet. I'm so excited to make that. Yeah, no, definitely. But yeah, so it's like a, 
you know, it might be a two year journey, sometimes longer. Two maybe years get, just to yeah. put the show together. Because yeah. there's oh, so many wow. phases and like, yes. you know, you might have the initial idea and a little bit yeah. of like, how how might this work? And then there's the funding kind of mm-hmm. aspect of having to apply for funds to, yeah. to fund, you know, because you've got studios to hire, musicians to compose, people yes. to pay. There's so many kind of levels. Elements, of, yeah. 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 Mm. So, yeah. So, um, so now like the Rainbow Butterfly, we've had our kind of first part of arts council funding yeah now we're not funded but we're gonna get our new funding i like how i'm saying that absolutely we're gonna get fingers crossed yeah it's, <laughs> yeah, it's gonna come and then we'll no, go definitely. on a tour um yeah. and there will be different aspects of that tour as well so there's just okay. yeah there's so many kind of stages and phases to yeah to developing a piece of work and then brilliant it theater, finally yeah and which mm-hmm. one is your favorite aspect of it is it like the, the research the performance Ooh. or um you know the after Do you know, what? you know i yeah. think it's like so often an idea mm-hmm. i will start to get images so i work a lot with intuition so like okay. um, papillon which is a piece that i made before yeah. the rainbow butterfly i know there's going to be a kind of a next phase of it almost okay. and um i've been getting these images of that's also on an aerial silks okay it's another aerial silks piece i've been getting this image of what the silks look like and i'm really like, ah, just coming to you yeah. with the visions yeah and so there's something about like <laughs> brilliant have those visions yeah but then seeing it come to life like when the there vision is like then you look and you're like there it is in front of me right on that's my favorite right thing. do you know it's interesting that you've said that right Oh, I'm just going to review it. I'm, I'm working on a new logo right now, uh, you know, for uh, for the brand. And I'm speaking to an artist, really, mm. really great guy. Like he's really good at what he does. So Amazing. he asked me, like, what do you want? I'm like, I don't know, right? <laughs> but I was like, I wanted to embody this and I wanted to have this. So I did like a doodle sketch of what it could be. I was like, he's like, oh, this doesn't really help me. I'm like, <laughs> I know, right? But I said... Okay, just do some drafts. Let's see what we come up with. And I was like, I feel like something's being birthed here. Mm. And I was like, I don't know, but I'll know when I see it. So right. do you know exactly what you're saying? Yeah, it's and that's so I said, true, isn't right, it? I'm like, something is being birthed. Once you've done what you're doing, when I see it, I will say, yep, that's it. Mm-hmm. Right. But now I can't tell you. I can give you the ideas. I can maybe tweak it here to be yeah. like, I want it to embody this and to have these elements mm-hmm. and things like that. But until it's done, yeah, I won't know. Right. Absolutely. But the visions that you're saying, like certain things were coming to me. I would add this and this would look good. I put something. Yeah. But I'm like, this is not it. So refine it. Then I don't know what it's going to come back with. But I, I just say to myself, I will have this knowing. Like once I have a look, I will know that that's it. When it's been, and this, I, I like this idea of like percolation, <laughs> yeah. like like that like you make the coffee, you know, like mm-hmm. you percolate the idea, and then all these visions and images come, come and together. It's like boom, it's there. In the front product, of me. right? Yes, and even when you perform it now, there'll be certain elements that might be like just inspired. Yeah, and it comes together when you see it, it's like yeah, there yeah. you go. And then like right. trusting those, even so, like last week we made this yeah. piece for a, for another company called Made of Gold. Yes. And um, it was so cool to see Brilliant. the intuitions yeah. coming out and then be like, oh, my God, the show's beautiful. This is it, right? Yeah. And it all just started in yeah. your head. And but also it, in yeah. other people's heads and like listening to like, yeah. like the concept came up. Yes. One artist and what they were saying like, in the space. That's it. You know, and it's like, I think there's something about being able to be inquisitive. Yes. And listen. And, and open. Bring it all together yes. in a way. And that's for me what. Yeah. I love as a choreographer is is yeah. listening to everyone and mm-hmm. then bringing it together in a way that kind of is like that's the service cohesive yeah, isn't exactly. it and yes. collaborative and absolutely and healing in a yes. way that it needs to be in that space yes mm. I agree with you mm. I mean the way you're describing that is how I do things right you know that's literally why I called um, this podcast let inspiration take over so the let is huge where it's like allow it. Yeah. to happen let it be an inspired thing mm. as opposed to trying to structure it too hard i, I do have questions at certain times where i know they'll, they'll take a certain place but it's mm. the same thing where it's like it might go one direction it might no it might be like a open conversation it might be a closed one but mm. it is what it is right if i come out with like a great perfect podcast cool if it's not but that's what happens when you allow yeah. for inspiration to just happen it might be perfect or it might be insp- imperfect but that's how i prefer it and it's perfectly you know? imperfect it's perfectly <laughs> imperfect right because yeah. i feel like there's so much more you get out of it there's so much more magic that you get when you just feel it mm-hmm. and just 
allow it and then it will gift you it will bless you you mm. will discover certain things and some things will just come from the heavens yeah i will call it basically. right and then it happens so basically. it's absolutely brilliant where it's like mm. you are an embodiment with everything that you do with your work it's kind of like you're just describing some of the ideas that i've been having Amazing. with your process and your creative process yeah. how you bring things together it's that word that i used earlier you birth things right yes. it may not be there but if it's coming from another collaborator and all the things that you're piecing together by the time it's done it's actually been born now you know yeah. of everything yes. and that's why I, so i have a <clears throat> coaching program that's over <clears throat> nine months and it's for yeah. exactly that reason it's like yeah. we can we 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 can kind of rebirth ourselves yes you know, that concept of like and i suppose what we were talking about earlier of like mm -hmm. we don't know who we are <laughs> but yes. giving ourselves that birthing process and maybe that's the, like the perfect amount of time to actually make a show let's say shows take nine months right <laughs> i was saying two years actually surprised me i thought yeah. it was this i thought you'd say like oh maybe five months and yeah. but then that shows though as well that you're quite serious mm -hmm. about your craft and what you do mm -hmm. i'm now realizing a serious business yeah as i is. said you're teaching you're preaching to us right now we're learning something and it's a wonderful thing because from when i saw it i just thought you know all i know about dance is oh you go you move your body no guys right <laughs> i've learned it so much mm. more is spirituality it's connection so. it's discovery mm. learning yourself discovering yourself learning about other people mm. it's like you're going through certain it's almost therapy therapeutic yeah. as well those are the yeah. words that are kind of ringing out as yeah. i'm speaking to you it's sacred art to heal the heart right right do you get what I mean? Even just that process of allowing yourself to be open is, mm. is something else. It, it, it takes you being in the zone totally. and that sort of thing. So it's, yeah, wonderful. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? Yeah, yeah. so grateful. So grateful for my job. <laughs> right. <laughs> I was also going to ask you, speaking of which, what has been one of your proudest moments in, in doing what you do? Oh, gosh, so yeah. many. Okay, I'm going to go for one. And probably mm -hmm. as I say that one, I'll be like, no, it's that one. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. But performing at Sadler's Wells, my own show at Sadler's Wells, which is this big theatre in London, that was okay. that was pretty epic. Um, it's funny because my mum always, like, my mum never quite gets my work or is always like, yeah, I didn't understand it. <laughs> mm -hmm. But for sure, like, there's this, um, I think the moments when my mum really got like, okay, yeah, you're serious about this and... I will not send you any more articles trying to get you to go for a job interview <laughs> for okay, a normal yeah. job. There's probably a proud, a, a pride Whatever in that, that is. like, yeah, <laughs> she gets it. And, and, and like, you know, there's, um, when she likes something, it's like, yeah. oh yeah, it's, it's, I think mums are the best audience. Yeah. They're just going to always be very, very honest. Yes. Um, probably like traveling like traveling for work so mm. there was a moment as a performer when i got to go and perform at the joyce theater in new york okay or the olympics opening ceremony those were like two brilliant highlights. oh wow um or the yes. chumneys which is a group that i saw when i was 17 i was like they're amazing and i got to perform with them so things yeah. like that but then i think my work um so last year i choreographed a section of do you know little amal the puppet that walked mm. through um it's an amazing project oh yeah she walked mm -hmm. i think all the way from syria all the way to the uk really then, yeah that oh, was wow. amazing we got yeah. to choreograph a show yeah for one of for her arrival into manchester that was like wow. you know just and and as well the cast were incredible like mm. shout out to that amazing cast from we Brilliant. like i got my friend from new york i just got yeah. the best people like wow i had the dream and actually i had uh so miriam gadry is my friend from new york yeah incredible dancer and i kept on saying i was like i've got a million miriam skirt solo because oh, wow. she she's an incredible um similar kind of like dance background mm -hmm. to myself um she's an incredible kind of um in the, in how she dances with the skirt she's okay um yeah how to describe that so there's these wonderful dances again of the diaspora that often work with using and dancing with a skirt like okay Roomba, um, oh yeah, yeah i've seen that that the spanish is it like a yeah, spanish like type dance kind of roots, yes yeah, so i've seen that yeah roots, really oh, right and, yeah, um, yeah, yeah yeah she she basically Brilliant. i i got <clears> miriam I got Miriam in my show and Miriam mm -hmm. did a skirt dance and it was like the most breathtakingly beautiful thing. And it was a really, so the story, the singer of that piece okay. had a really beautiful story that um, I basically was sitting in the audience just crying at watching Miriam, yeah. the, the singer, because she, she was um, 
she kind of had to it had to be okay. a secret that she was there watching the show so okay. she was kind of protected and yes. I was watching her crying watching this show wow. with her children and that for me was like just the most like I've got the goosebumps now right yeah. can you tell us a little I can see them uh, <laughs> can you tell us a little bit about the story uh, behind um, sure um, so that piece um so yeah. this particular woman mm. um her journey I actually am like I don't know if I have enough information to really okay. give, to do it justice just and, gist, and where yeah. I'm allowed. But basically, mm-hmm. um, she was persecuted and she came to England and okay. her husband was still back home. Okay. And um, her children, the song that she was singing was this lullaby that she sang to her okay. children at night. And right. she'd sung this song for us and Miriam danced to it. And it was mm. just this most beautiful brilliant beautiful beautiful thing yes yeah now that's absolutely wonderful Mm. uh thank you for breaking that down yeah um, Yeah, just because it's this sort of protected story i'm like yes you don't know if you want to (laughs) dig deep and and jump deep into it yeah you know that's absolutely fine yeah Yeah. but yeah that was an incredible moment and you know an absolute honor to be invited to choreograph i worked with a director just bigging up everyone cheryl martin was the director on that show shout out (laughs) shout out to cheryl yeah yeah and yeah that was you know really unforgettable yeah no that's that's absolutely brilliant i mean yeah so many avenues so many stories i know we could go like for ages mm-hmm. i do have a couple more things to ask you just before sure. we wind uh you know we wind down so one of the things i was going to jump into um for yourself is as with anything of course you have challenges and you mm-hmm. have certain things that may not go i could do my what how you may want them what are some of the things that you've experienced on this journey of sure. you know being a dancer challenges two challenges mm-hmm. one maybe it's like the most obvious one mm-hmm. Mon- money money I'm really like, oh, I'm always yes. like, the money is coming the money is coming because oh, yeah. I, I really think yeah. um you know the power in like i was talking about this unshakable belief in yes. what you're doing is so important and absolutely then the passion really carries you right yeah yeah um and then connected to that actually mm-hmm. that having a shakeable belief as in like not believing in myself and mm-hmm. and self-worth has been a real journey wow. yeah um, and now I have my practices you know I, I have um I have a book yes yes you can tell us um, a bit about that as it's well a, so yeah. it's called journal to joy and it's okay. really my practice that I use every day to okay to kind of um, be me to the full in terms of to realize Brilliant. I have got worthy things to say in this there world you and go. you know like to yeah. just come with a whole with my whole self instead of yeah. kind of apologizing and um mm-hmm and so on don't worry about that one um yeah so um so that's that's been a real challenge and like it really did affect me and there was one company where Mm -hmm. I was basically bullied but I know it was also because I was putting out there that I wasn't you know I didn't like the the whole way I was holding myself is like I was apologizing all the time okay not to say that's okay yeah but I I also like you know kind of um I I recognize that Mm -hmm. We need a shakeable belief. Yeah, we need an unshakable yeah. oh, belief. Oh, an unshakeable belief, unshakeable you're saying. Unshakeable belief yeah. in ourselves. Yes. And that, that that's where, like, doing the work on yourself, not so yeah. you turn into one of those gurus who yeah. doesn't care about anyone else, yeah. but so that you can um, be your best self and be mm-hmm. of service without mm-hmm. trying to resolve your identity all the time. Yes. So, yes, Ella, um, I was just about to ask you, uh, if you can tell us a little bit about your podcast, because I know you podcast yeah. as well. Uh, you've got the Power Power Up podcast, yeah. which is brilliant. I know later on you can tell people where they can find, sure. uh, you know, the podcast and that sort of thing. Tell us a little bit about the, sure. the podcast that you do. Um, yeah. So it came actually, it was my my wonderful friend Leila Okai and mm-hmm. I were having a chat and she was like, have you ever thought about doing a podcast? Mm. And she said, just chat to my friend. I've forgotten what her wonderful friend was, an amazing mm-hmm. human. And we had this great chat. Okay. And I was like, yeah, I do feel like I would love to do a podcast. And because I'm so interested in unlearning, there you, you know, go. transformation and then creativity, I was like, that's a really, I feel like they would be really interesting things to, to mm-hmm. discuss. Um, but I was like, but I don't think I want to do it by myself. Who would I love to do it with? And um, and I instantly thought of my best friend, Amma. Okay. Um, Amma Rouge. And I was just like, I just know we need to do this together. And like, yes. Amma is the most wonderful human being, but you know, has such a presence and, um, okay. it, yeah, it's just like such a joy to listen to. So I just Brilliant. knew it was, it was Amma. Yeah. And so I planted the seed just before, I think it was actually the day we went into lockdown. Like okay. I was in Bristol at the time and I left her a voice note and I was like, I know it's you. I know blah, blah, blah. And then, um, Amma tends to like, 
really take time to think about things. But with okay. this, Emma was like, yes. Yes. And you know, and Immediately. Like, this is it. Like, we were meant to do this together. Yes. It's just such a joy because, you know, two Bessies, we have yeah. so much fun. We actually call it, we often talk about Jodge, which is okay. jar of joy because it's just so much laughter. And right. Yeah, and it's, it's really fun. Brilliant. Um, yeah. And we have wonderful guests on. Um, mm-hmm. So so we kind of pick like in a season, we'll have three themes. Okay. So like this month or this season, season five we're on, mm-hmm. we have um, living in your creator or living in your victim okay. as a concept. Slow living as a concept. And uh, what's the other concept? Yes. Gender. Gender okay. identity. Okay. Yeah. And they were all yeah. like, you know, wonderful guests. Because we also, yeah. being in the creative industry, you meet so many amazing people. Mm. And so it's just, um, it's just such a blessing to be able to kind of invite them on this, onto our show Platform. and ask these questions. Yes, and, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's brilliant. I've had a look. I've had a bit of a listen. I'll definitely awesome. be listening and, um, and looking once awesome. again. Because it's brilliant. As I say, yourself, um, as a person you're just so rich you know in culture and everything that you do i Thank could already you. tell even before i invited you onto the podcast that you know you're a person of service and that sort of thing Thank and i was like you. you know what that energy that ella has is something that i would like to grace my listeners i'm like mm-hmm. Right. Compliments. Uh, no. You're a shy, right? <laughs> For them to experience it. And I feel like today you've educated us, uh, you've oh, schooled us, you. you've opened our minds up. Um, it would be great to have you back maybe at some point yeah, when you have I something mean, else to discuss. Your, pod- your podcast is you know? awesome. Your family are awesome. Right. You want to hang out here again. Yes. Absolutely. Look at right. This amazing studio. No, nah, thank so you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I say it only comes alive when people, you know, actually actually come on it yeah. like yourself and they but also hearts, your work you know? you know i think your yeah. work is also service oh and, thank um, you yeah and like the whole concept is yeah. just so Appreciate what we need it. in these hard times and these different yeah. times we just absolutely need this. to hear yeah. people's stories i, I feel yeah. like people's stories are so powerful especially when they Me tell too. them from their own point of view in mm. their own way untouched and filtered and mm. unrestricted is what i do so yeah. i don't have an expectation of the guest tell them oh you have to be said no be yourself be who you are in what you do because even if it goes to only inspiring one person i've done my job or two people yeah so it's not about chasing clout or getting numbers it's about really actually impacting mm-hmm. people and um, you know impacting yeah. their lives and that sort of thing so i don't right the clapping oh, I, love that. <laughs> uh, I was gonna say what do we have to look forward to uh, in oh, the future for yourself to. yes um so we <clears throat> have journal to joy mm-hmm. it's coming out very soon it's the second okay. edition brilliant um I've just got accredited, which is so nice. The, okay. the kind of coaching modality that I've been studying for the past eight years have just given me accredition. Yeah. But that's super exciting. Brilliant. Um, yeah, look forward to and that. the God X path, which is this kind of um, nine month program that I offer starts okay. again. So I've got um, seven God X's. Okay. Um, which is kind of my, my the, the reason I chose that word is that it's, it's this thing about moving out of the boxes and the okay. binaries of gender yes. um, to be our most authentic self. And, and that yeah. really that's what it's about for me is like being you to the full. Mm-hmm. Um, so we've got that coming up in April next year. Brilliant. Um, the show with Akeem, which is called like water through a stone. Really excited about that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm sure there's loads more things to be on it. I mean, every day yeah. I'm just like, Wow that thing that we created in a day or that thing that we created in it's you know, coming to life yeah it's yeah. amazing to just see it all kind of unfold come alive and, um, absolutely yeah now, that's brilliant i'll be keeping an eye on everything that's coming along um as i said and keeping in touch with you yeah, um as sure. well and where we can collaborate um you know work wise i know we yeah, will do or where amazing. i can point somebody your way most certainly will um speaking of which where can people find you your work sure. and um, socials and socials i love mm-hmm. instagram I okay, am most, brilliant. I'm on there most. I'm uh, to be fair, I don't have any notifications on my phone. So if you, if I don't answer, you yes. know why. Um, <laughs> but I'm mostly yeah. on there. I am on like you know I have Twitter, I have LinkedIn. That's how we yeah. connected with Absolutely. LinkedIn. Absolutely, yeah, yes, so, LinkedIn. Yeah. yeah, that's where I found you. Yeah. There. yeah, brilliant. Um, I have my website, so yes. lmesma.co.uk, Mayagandaya okay. Limited. Yes, um, mayagandaya.com. Okay. Um. Yeah, and maybe mm-hmm. buy the podcast and the book. Yes, they're they probably they're like the easy absolutely phase. the book. Where can they mm. buy that? Um, so second edition will be on mm-hmm. Amazon really okay. soon. Um, first edition is out already, but wait mm-hmm. for the second one because I think there it's really cool. Yeah, so it'll be on Amazon. 
Yeah. Yeah. All right, Ella, listen, thank you so much for coming today, gracing us with your time and giving us a little part, a little piece of yourself and what you do in your art and your creativity. Please continue uh, to do what you do in my own way. I will support you in what you do because it really encourages me and inspires me to continue to do what I what I'm doing at the moment. As I told you, you know, I intend to take this to new heights and that sort of thing. And yeah, I'm so excited as well. So thank you so much for coming on the podcast Um, today. Guys, make sure you like, follow and subscribe on YouTube. Look out on Spotify, Apple, leave us a review and that sort of thing. But uh, yeah, another amazing uh, conversation uh, with an amazing person. So guys, see you in the next one. Cheers.